Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Brie from With Love Brie, and today I am doing a tutorial video on the new Scrap Diva Design die. It is the file card storage box. Um, so I didn't show this in my unboxing video because I didn't realize it was actually on her. Or I didn't realize it was already in her shop. So I thought I would go ahead and to make up for that um, to do a tutorial on how to put it together. Um, I'm pretty sure there will probably be videos out already on it, but in case you guys haven't seen them, then maybe you guys can learn from mine. So I will show you guys what I cut out um, as well as the dies, but um, it does come with, uh, gosh, um, it does come front and back, so you will be getting dies on both ends. Um, the only thing I'm not using from this die are the little sentiment pieces because I'll tell you guys what I'm going to do with this. Um, but it does come with this little sentiment that says craft like no one is watching. And I thought that was really cute. I love her little sentiments on here. And it says you're the best crafty friend. So these are perfect to make little um, like gift boxes for crafty friends. And I love that all her sentiments are crafty related because we need more of those. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for all of us happy mailers. So um, that is the die. And here it is on her shop. Don't mind my broken screen. Um, it's just the cover, but um, this is how it looks. So we're going to go ahead and put it together. This is my first time playing with the die. I haven't tried making one, so um, I'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory. Um, but this is it on the website, on her website, if you guys want to check it out. So what I did was I used my... Sizzix switch machine so it was um this can actually hold up to an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper it can go a little bit more than eight and a half by eleven i would say maybe eleven and a half twelve is um it does fit a twelve inch piece but then when it gets to the edge if you need something to cut there it won't cut so i usually go with like an eleven half inch piece um i think this is also nine inches so yeah it's nine inches but i always go half an inch smaller so that's what I used, and with these dies, you can actually die cut everything in one cut. So let me show you guys what I did. Um, for the base piece, which is the lace piece, I actually was able to get that all cut out from one piece of 110 pound cardstock that is 8.5 by 11. So I laid them out on here like this, as you guys can see. And I'm pretty sure once you guys have it, you'll realize that you can get them all fit in fit on here but um yeah i was able to fit it all in my machine get it all put through and it cut down um cut like butter and then i did the layering pieces out of pattern paper and this thin pattern paper right here and um again it's eight and a half by eleven uh, i did use a 12 by 12 piece of pattern paper for the outer part which i will show you it is this one right here and um, you can cut it down to 6 by 12 I usually do that. The only thing is, is when you're left with like a little thin strip, that could have been part of your other, you know, piece um, to make this piece a little bit bigger. So I am very anal about that. I know, sorry. Um, I didn't mean to say that word, but I really am. Um, I try to save as much pattern paper as possible. Um, so I did cut mine all odd. But if you want to cut your piece down to like 6 by 12 it will actually fit on there and you'll have some excess paper as well. So just in case you guys have this machine, you can definitely get it cut out. If you don't, you could still use your Sizzix Big Shot as well. I do have a hand crank large um, like a platinum machine, the big one. I don't like using it. It hurts my wrists. Um, <laughs> I don't mind using my Big Shot, but the big one is just too much for me. So I used my electric switch machine um, for this. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you guys what I cut out. So I have my dies here. Um, this right here is going to be your side piece and the bottom piece, as you guys can see. The cool thing about her die is you only need to cut each piece one time. Some dies, they only give you one side, and then when you have to cut... So when you cut this out, you're going to have to go and cut it out again one time. Some dies, they give you only one side and you have to cut it out twice. And you have to use the side that, like, on the back end. And you can tell, you know, what's the front and what's the back. So that's why I don't like those kinds of dies. What I love about hers is it comes with both sides. 
So if you look here, I, um, right here you have one side, two sides, or the second side, sorry. <laughs> The bottom part is right here, so you don't have to cut that separate. It's already attached to one of the sides. So this one's a little bit shorter. You do get the layering pieces. Again, you only have to cut them out one time. This is the bottom layering piece. Right here, this is going to be the back side of your storage um, little, like your little holder, right? So right here, this is going to be a side. This is a side. This is going to be the back piece of it like this and you want the lace part to be on top obviously because the bottom is going to be flush to the bottom like wherever you're putting it okay and then you're going to have another piece the last piece is this one right here and this one is going to be the front part of your box so same as the back the lace part is on top but this is going to be for the front because it's shorter so it's going to look like this and then you have the back piece once we put it together you'll see how it um, comes along but once you see the dies, you automatically you're like, okay, I know how this goes. I don't know. It's her dies are just um, very self-explanatory. I love it. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and I'm just gonna put this back. Last thing I need are to lose any dies. So there's that. And then it also comes with a label piece. So a cute little label piece right here. It's a little rounded um, corner label. We're gonna be using that as well. I was going to do um, my own label, but it comes with a die, so you know I might as well use what comes with it um, for the tutorial. So here they are. I'm planning on actually organizing my handmade cards in these because it does actually fit a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. So I thought it would be really cute to make multiples of these, even though this is my first one. I'm thinking of making multiples of these and using them to store any cards like birthday cards anniversary note cards anything like that have them like lined up and then um, label the sides um, what they are so happy birthdays uh, thank you cards anything like that so that's my plan with this um, and I think it's just gonna be such a cute way to showcase my cards you know what I'm saying all right, so let me go ahead and go through each one here. So what I did was I used 110 pound cardstock in this bubblegum pink color from Michaels. And again, each piece is cut out once. That's all you need. Then I went ahead and I cut out this pattern paper right here one time for each of the pieces as well. What I'm gonna tell you right now though is just remember when you're cutting, if you're using a large cutting plate, Remember the orientation of how you need to have these dies because remember on your spine piece right here This is going to be going up and down the bottom of your box is going to be going side by side The side and the bottom are two different rectangles. The bottom one is a little bit shorter than the side Did I make a mistake? I think I made a mistake. I think I cut the wrong one. So it's a good thing I showed you guys because I think I possibly, let me see, I think I cut out the wrong one. Yes, I cut out the wrong one. See? Am I tripping? Oh yeah, the spine is a little bit longer than the bottom, so I'm going to have to recut that, but it's a good thing I have my um, big shot right next to me, because then I could just do that. But let me just show you guys really quick. I haven't done a tutorial like this in a while, so, like, where I have to explain dye, so excuse me so bear with me sorry if this is messy but can you see that there's just that little bit right here so the bottom of your box is the shorter one and then the longer side is your spine so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is cut out uh, my spine over again so the spine you have to make sure is going up and down unless you don't care um, and then the bottom part is gonna be you know going land, uh, landscape horizontal then when it comes to your side pieces when you lay them out if you're using a large cutting mat just make sure that both of your pieces are going to be cut out like this and not one way like both of them like this because if you do that one is going to be sideways and they're just not gonna one's gonna look like really odd i hope that makes sense okay so yeah just pay attention to our, to the orientation 
of how you're cutting your dies. I'm going to go ahead and recut the spine piece real quick. I'm just going to use this paper right here and I'm going to cut it out. Um, I love the Dalmatians on here, so I'm going to try my best to get as much of that as possible. Okay, so now it's all cut out. So now we should be Gucci. Okay, yeah, there you go. So I'll put this like this. So you can see there's just a very small difference. Alright, so... This one we're keeping. I am going to do some stitching. There is faux stitching on here, as you guys can see. But I am going to do a little bit of stitching on the inside. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it up first and then stitch it. Um, but what I also did, you don't have to do this, this is optional. I cut out this really thin paper. It's like this polka dot paper, it reminds me of the Dalmatian. So I made a birthday card with this exact color combo and I loved it. So I'm gonna use this for the inside of the bookcase. But again, or not bookcase, sorry, the card holder. So this is going to go on the inside, but I'm going to put it over my stitching so that way you don't see the stitching on the inside. Most of the time I don't really care if you could see it, but um, I just thought it would be really cute to have this polka dot. I really wanted this to show somewhere, so that's why I'm going to use it. But again, that's optional. You don't have to do that. That is um, an extra step that you don't need to do. Um, and then this is my label right here. I cut it out of the polka dot paper since it's going to be on top of the Dalmatian and I think it's the Beagle. And then I did cut it out in pink foam so that way I can glue that on top and then it kind of pops off. All right, so let me go ahead and start gluing these pieces together. I might skip this part and then I will um, stitch it. But I think because I'm going to stitch it, I'm just going to use my ATG and I'm going to use the ATG in the middle of the layers because I don't want my needle to get all sticky, you know what I'm saying? Last thing I need is a sticky needle. And just remember when you put this together, your lace top is on the top right here. It's not at the bottom because when you put your pattern paper, you want to make sure your pattern paper is facing the right way. And I am using from the paper... I am using the Let's Celebrate paper from Joann's. Um, I got this a while ago. I was really late to the party because I just felt like I didn't need it, but I started making cards again, and of course I picked it up when it was on super sale. <laughs> okay, I don't know if they still have it. I hope they do because I'm probably going to grab another one. It's just such a cute birthday paper. Okay, so then this one right here doesn't matter how you put it. Um, you can even do it sideways. It's up to you. But I'm actually not going to stitch this one because it's going to be on the bottom. And so I don't want it to get all bulky down there. So I'm just going to put my ATG all over it. You can use liquid glue. I usually do, but for sake of video. I love the faux stitching on her dive. It's so pretty. So there's that. And then again, same with all these other pieces. I'm going to go ahead and just put in the middle. If you use liquid glue, it does add stability. When it uh, dries, it's going to harden up and then it makes your project a lot um, sturdier too. So you could do that as well. When I cut out this little rectangle piece right here, I made sure that I got the Dalmatian in there. <laughs> I thought it was the cutest thing. Gotta get the doll in there. Okay, so... That was not straight at all. Alright. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and bring this to my sewing machine. I'm going to stitch this all up 
And then I'm probably actually going to glue this off camera as well because I'm literally just going to stitch this. Um, I'm just going to be gluing this exactly how I glued on the outside, just with some um, liquid glue. So let me go ahead and do all that and then we'll go ahead and put it all together. Okay you guys, so this is the stitching right here. Um, I, I don't even know why I didn't realize when I started stitching that the thread wasn't pink. It's actually mint, but I actually like it because of all the pink that's already on here. So the mint kind of breaks it up. You can barely see it because it's a really light mint green color. Um, the baby's waking up so I gotta get him, but <laughs> I wanted to show you guys. Um, but yeah, so it's like a really light mint color but i love how it goes with the faux stitching it's just i love how it looks so that is how um this is right here i think it's because the baby's crying um so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and grab the baby i'm gonna go ahead and glue on the inner pieces to the um inside because as you guys can see you can kind of see it it's not too crazy i have white bobbin thread so it's not like overwhelming or anything or overpowering so I'm gonna go ahead and just glue these in and it goes perfectly on there and then um, we'll go ahead and put this all together okay guys so I have the baby with me um, he's just here on my floor lying down on his mat so um, I covered everything and the right once I put one piece down I was like what am I doing I um, I think I was putting the spine and I realized I should have put it I should have put the little pieces on because now it's going to go over the pattern paper you know what I mean you guys were probably all probably yelling at your phone telling me like don't do it yet don't do it yet because <laughs> you guys probably knew better than me um I always make this mistake I always end up you know putting getting too excited and then just skipping a step so you know um if you guys get this die just if you're going to line the inside um definitely put your little pieces on first because then the pattern paper will cover it if you know what I mean. But it's too late. It's my first one too, so, you know, it's whatever. But I'm going to go ahead and slowly fold over these edges. I am using, again, 110 pound cardstock, so I don't want to, you know, crack it or anything. So I'm going to try to fold this down. So hopefully Clea will sleep a little bit longer so I can get this video done. I'm going to try to get this out by Sunday. Um, it's the weekend after Easter. So hopefully I can get this out Sunday or Monday. Because um, I will have my unboxing on Saturday. Which is today. But um, that's the goal. Okay, so here's this, and then this one right here. So I hope everyone's Easter was fun. Mine was eventful, for sure. We were at my mom's house. Chris' parents were there. Um, I had all my siblings there. Okay, sorry. I folded this on the... Oh, stitching line. That's not what I wanted. So I'm trying to focus... <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. Um, yeah, and then we had my older sister's husband, some of his siblings, or nephews was there, and his sister. Because it was also a surprise birthday party for him. At my mom's house, so we went there. Okay. And that is why these videos are out a little bit later, because I got this right before I was leaving. Um... Alright, and then now I just need to fold this one. Okay, so to put this together, the one that has the lip, um, which is the bottom right here, is going to be your left hand side. The one without it is going to be on the right, like this. Guys, this is going to bother me so much. I might have to... Okay, so yeah, it's going to bother me. I'm probably most likely going to have to cut another piece of this pattern paper. Because look, the bottom is going to be... Ugh. It's okay. It's all good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use liquid glue. I don't like using hot glue for 3D projects just because it, like... Sometimes it bulks up in certain areas if you put too much. 
or if you don't glue it on right away. So I'm just going to use liquid, even though I don't really have much time for that, but it's okay. So I'm going to put some adhesive on here. I'm going to start off with the side piece, right, before I put the spine, because I think it's just going to be a lot easier for me. So I'm going to do that first. Probably not the best person to follow since I messed up there. <laughs> All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just have this piece right here that's folded. I'm going to put this right on top and line it up so that I know it's going to go on there straight. So I'm just lining up the edge here and this these two pieces right here. So if you could see, they're lined up on the corners here. And I'm just going to hold down on it for a little bit. I'm using Barely Arts glue, so that stuff dries pretty quick. Okay, I'm going to open it up. And press down on that. So there you go. There's that piece. And then I'm going to do the spine. So the spine piece is going to go like this. Right here. Just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and add glue to these three pieces. Like this. I do go a little crazy. I know a little bit goes a long way, but I don't know. I'm, I go heavy with my adhesive. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put this one on. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to line up the bottom first. And then hold that in place for a little bit. And slowly kind of move in to the sides. Like this. And then press down. And then what I'm going to do is put it down like this. Get this glue off my table before it dries. So this is why I did the bottom first. Is so that way I can lay this flat and then I can go ahead and glue this. Well, I guess in a sense you do have to put the two pieces together first because you need to get this flap on there. But you can lay it flat and just use like a bone folder or whatever you use to crease down on all your pieces. And just stick it on there. I think my glue dry up a little bit, so... I'm going to add more. Okay, so I probably just skipped through all that because I literally was just gluing and I was just adding more glue because I just wanted to make sure all of this was going to be glued down very, uh, really good. So that's all I was doing. Alright. Okay. So here it is. Let me get this out the way. This is how it's looking basically done. You can even leave this open. I know it looks kind of odd, but if you're going to put like, you know, you could put a book in here and then just have it be the um, spine of the book out here so that you could slide it in and out so you don't have to carry it out. Um, I don't know. It's up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and do this side now. And I guess the lining in the inside actually doesn't look bad. It kind of looks like it's a border of pink, so I guess I'll leave it. It's not too crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this part right in here. I'm just going to make sure I had enough glue because, man, I did not add enough earlier. That was not holding. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to start off with the bottom. You definitely can put glue on one side first, but I'm just going to do it all of them first at once. It has or is having a good weekend. Like I said, I don't know when I'm going to get this out, if it's going to be on the weekend or after. Um, Chris is gonna get fitted for a suit. My niece is turning 18, so she's gonna have a, a ballroom party. So he needs to get a suit. I just got mine and the kids a couple days ago, and they're slowly coming in. Um, in case there needs to be any alterations done, but, um, it is gonna be after this weekend. We only got one weekend left, so I told him we have to do it this weekend. So I have a little man here. Say hi. 
Um, so I'm just gluing this label piece, which is the polka dot paper, onto the foam. And fortunately, I am limited on space here because I have the baby. He's watching me craft. Um, he's on my lap right now. So, I don't know if you can see his little hand. He's wearing an oversized tee from SeaWorld, and Kalea just woke up. Um, but yeah, so... I did that, and this is just going to get glued onto the front. This can get glued onto the back because, you know, you can have your label. That's where a lot of these book things are. The little labels are down here. I'm going to do it on the front because, like I said, I'm going to have the cards in there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Probably shouldn't have done all that talking, shouldn't I? Because now Clay's awake. <laughs> That's okay. It's all good. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead. I should have stitched this. I just realized I didn't. Okay, so that's gonna get glued onto there. And I did do some die cutting off camera. So I did die cut this little heart balloon. Um, let me show you guys. Out of some yellow paper from scraps. And I also die cut these letters. So these are the dies right here. Got the HBD for happy birthday. Um, and then the little heart balloon. Um, this is the heart balloon I got off Alley, but this uh, a while ago actually. And this is a Lawn Fawn die. They're the stitched letters, but they're called Oliver's Stitched ABCs. I've had this for a while, so I don't know when they, or if they still have it. I apologize if they don't. I wish I had the numbers though, because I don't. Um, but I did die cut that out of the yellow cardstock. I was going to use a, a stamp to put happy birthday, but I think what I'm going to do for all of these that I make, which I will share, I'm just going to put an image on the front and then I'm going to label them in the back. So like anniversary, I'll probably put just a regular heart and then I'll put Annie on the back. But I'm just going to glue this since the label is on foam. I'm just going to glue this with uh, my wet glue. Okay. So that, and then I'm not going to do any embellishing on the sides because I'm going to put them side by side. Um, so I don't want to do that. I probably should have not glued something on here because I'm thinking of gluing all of these next to each other. Maybe. We'll see. But okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue on the letters. I just want to get this done so I can edit it and get it out. Clea has a little bit of a cold. She's laying there. Okay, so I'm just going to get the last one put together on here. Cute! I love that yellow on the pink. So let me grab the cards really quick because I have some birthday cards made out of this collection. Okay, so here are the cards. I will put the envelopes in here. I don't have envelopes yet, but these are five by seven, and are they gonna fit? <gasps> five by seven fits, y'all. I am excited. Okay, um, so here are my cards that I made out of the collection. I'm just gonna stick them in here. And these are four by six. So the one that I made using this paper is this one, and I love it so much. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and just put these, and put these in like this. Yeah, I've been wanting to do a, like, card share, but I just don't know if you guys are into that. So, if you guys want to see the cards, I can show you guys in a different video. But look at how cute it, it fits five by seven cards, you guys. You don't even have to put envelopes in here if you don't want. If you have envelopes in a certain area like I do, um, you can just stick your cards in here and then just pull whenever you need one. But that is cute. I have a total of eight cards in here and these cards do have dimensionals on them. So I'm pretty sure you could fit about 10 cards in here without the envelopes. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good size. So this is really cute. Look at it. Here's the front, has the little heart balloon, has the cards in there, and 
there's the back with the label. Oops. <laughs> so that is my little tutorial, my little chat with me. I hope that you guys enjoyed um, watching this little tutorial video and I hope that you guys grab this die because it uh, honestly it is the cutest die. If you guys make hammy cards I think this is going to be a fun way to organize your cards. Um, so definitely grab it if you guys can. Um, again um, I, will I will have the link um, link down for you guys so that way um, you guys can go ahead and head to her store and grab the die. Um, I will have a couple other project shares as well out of um, some of the other dies that she sent me. So keep an eye out for those. If I can, I will try to get out more process videos using her dies. But that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create this little storage holder for my cards. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.